the evening. Welcome to LEC Update. It's week five, and this is the show you never thought you needed, and once you've seen it, you'll know for sure. Again, this is week five, and it's the first time you're seeing us. Uh, I'm Afi the Portra. And I'm pissed off. What, do you want to talk about it? I'm fine. All right, well, uh, this week... At least we Safari was on before us? You're telling me they would rather have literal monkeys on the show before putting us in there. All right, well, we are heading into week five week uh, action today. After all, the teams and the broadcast crew took a week to unwind. And with how the Mad Lions tore up the league at the start of the split, I don't think they show any signs of cooling down. I mean, just imagine making a music video of a music video and thinking that's good content. Kevin has no idea what he's doing. Kevin, our producer, you suggest that you know better, Christy? Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, this guy just thinks he can put Machine's hairy face on anything he wants and people are going to like it all of a sudden. Oh, oh, I like real, that. Real funny, guys. Eh, whatever. Mad Lions have been led by mid-split MVP and king of European sports, Kaiser, as well as their new mid laner who as mysterious as he is lethal. Zoomanoid. Well, a team without an Uma of their own, G2 have been performing like their NA at Worlds. So basically, they win a few games without impressing anyone. So they've extended an offer to Scrim C9, which is ironic because during the break week, while other teams were making big roster shuffles, Jisoo decided to go on a classic vacation. Now, if they really wanted to win, they could make some roster changes. Oh, yeah? like, no, not you, not you, hold it. Well, you know, they say the perfect bot lane doesn't exist. Oh. And you know, while not quite LCS level, Fnatic have also turned to North America to find practice with Immortals Academy. I was gonna say SO4 should just go ahead and change their handle to SOS before their game against Fnatic, but after that, I think most Fnatic fans would rather FF the entire split. Now, some people have really let themselves go in quarantine, but not Fnatic. They make sure they get all their LEC cardio in on LEC days, running it by running it down. Yeah, I, I think we get it, yeah. Okay, well, let's move on to some positive news. Ooh. Crownshot, aka Crowny, has taken Twitch chat by storm, stretching happiness as wide as he possibly can. Meanwhile, Christy is still weird. Hey, that was not in the script this morning. All right, well, over in Korea, Yamato Cannon has Seriously, finally Kevin? made it to Low Wasn't Park after his two week quarantine and made his LCK debut as head coach for Sandbox Gaming, leading his team to their first victories of the season, the first one over Team Dynamics. And on behalf of the entire crew here at the LEC, we would like to congratulate Jacob on his wins and wish him the Damn best it, Kevin, of luck. Please stop for talking the remainder into my ear. of the season. No, I don't want to have this conversation right now, Kevin. I no, you go. Oh, Schalke brought in L9 to prevent taking nine Ls. God Gilius is back, baby, and his only mission is to slay memes. The Schalke Null Fear through 18 meme folders will have to wait until 2021. And now the only thing left for Gilius to do is to make sure that Schalke don't expand to an 11-man roster. Now, the situation with Misfits was looking dire ever since they dosed Denik from the starting lineup. After four weeks, it is safe to say DOS looks like a Misfit on Misfits. Well, I have some good news and some bad news for Excel, SK, and Vitality fans. Good news is, you're tied with Fnatic and Origin. Bad news is, you're tied with Fnatic and Origin, and they look terrible. Fnatic's real nemesis is Fnatic Nemesis, and Hilla Sang should be Hilla shamed with his performance so far. And Origin, oh, Origin, 2017, 18, 19, which year was supposed to be the year of the duck again? Because I can't remember. But I do know for certain that 2020 is the year of the suck. Nuke makes every Origin game look like a Sunday roast with the amount he feeds. Oh, I'm sorry, Kevin, was that a bit too personal for you? Who peed in your cereal this morning? Oh, and aren't you even going to talk about Jack Troll or make a joke about Destiny at all? Oh, that shocks. That's not funny. That's just sad. Oh, I think you're right. Well, for LEC Update, I'm Afi de Portre. I'm sick of this shit. Kevin is coming and he does not look happy, dude.
Berlin, Germany for the opening of the second and the siding half of LEC Summer. All teams are in a position to contest for playoffs, but in the end, only six will make it. From now on, everything is on the line. Trevor and Ender, thank you so much for joining me as we talk about this crazy season and what's going on here in summer, because since we started with Best of Ones back in 2018, we have never had a season this close, with five teams currently tied at four and five. I mean, it's, it's crazy when you look at the standings and you look at the expected top performers of G2 and Fnatic, and they haven't found their groove yet. And it feels like they have uh, bigger problems to resolve. But I love seeing the fact that Mad Lions, that Rogue, new orgs, new players, new faces are standing at the top of the table. And it is more compelling and arguably competitive than it ever has been. And it's not like Mad Lions and Rogue being at the top is a fluke by any means. They have been performing yeah. so consistently well, have their own styles. Mad Lions continue to innovate week on week and are always a pleasure to watch. And I'm definitely looking at it through the lens of, is this the changing of the guard we talked about a couple of times in the previous years. Is this the real deal, these top teams? I feel like it could be. We took a look at this, and in terms of like competitiveness and how close the standings are, this ranks as the fourth closest mid-split standings. Now, when we look at the format that we introduced in 2018, I want to bring up the standings from that split and show you that Vitality was sitting at the top of the table halfway through. At that time, it felt more like a flash in the pan. Yeah. Fnatic and G2 well, still did it though. Did seconds. you think it was a flash in the pan when this happened, though? I had less faith okay. in Vitality okay. proving, right, than I do now in Mad Lines and Rogue. Mm -hmm. And the point that I want to get to is that we have always seen new teams, new players, new orgs stepping up and competing. None of them have been able to topple Fnatic and G2. I think this split, it could turn around. I feel like Mad Lions and Rogue have the chemistry to, to make it happen, and the next couple of weeks will determine how deep I go on that face. Sure, and to be fair, like 2018 spring, that was one split before I got here, but I was still watching, and I remember things didn't end all that well for the top team at the time, Vitality. True, yes. However, true. now Mad Lions especially, I have a lot of faith in. I think they have the sticking power to stay at Padawan, the top. Young Padawan, do you remember the hashtag of the time? Uh, I believe it was something like every game counts. Oh, yes. he learned he taught so me well. well. He we learned pushed it so well. So, we <laughs> pushed it so much, and I don't think it really took, actually. <laughs> it's coming uh, back. It's coming it back. I'm coming. the old man on the show, and hashtags are cool. Apparently, it's coming back. So, uh, yeah, now we have new top teams, Mad Lions and Rogue, who, by the way, didn't even exist in spring 2018. Just quite short, Ender, why <laughs> do you think teams like Mad Lions and Rogue could have the staying power to be the real deal? Well, I think looking at Mad Lions first, they've just pretty much got everything. They came in league in spring and they got out to a good start We're like hey rookie team like they're gonna perform pretty well let's see what they can do in playoffs but they've taken big games off teams like g2 and this split they're innovating week on week and each one of their players are stepping up to the task as well it's a combination of clever out of game preparation as well as very talented players on the roster and very quickly both of these organizations have consistently shown developments and improvements they have players that can carry from multiple roles while they may not have the super star like a caps they are showing that as a team as a, a unit they're growing developing and competing mid split mvp kaiser all i'm go. saying all good right. stuff there i think a lot of people will agree with you now to get more insight on exactly how the playoff race is looking right now here's medic with his playoffs checkup Thank you very much, Shox. And as Quickshot said, at the halfway mark of summer, the LEC is the closest it's been in a long time, probably since 2016. With this in mind, I was wondering how our playoffs would look if the season ended right now. Before we dive into the playoffs bracket, there are three things I want to remind everyone of. Firstly, Europe has four seeds for Worlds this year, meaning our top four teams from playoffs get the chance to lose to an LPL team in the finals. Secondly, there's no regional gauntlet. If you don't make it to playoffs, you're not going to make it to Worlds. And thirdly, vitally, the seeding for playoffs is determined by championship points. So let's see how seeding for playoffs would work out if the season ended today. I understand there's currently a five-way tie for fifth place, so determining who would end up fifth and who would be sixth is a, is a little bit tricky. But for the sake of the hypothetical argument and the experiment we're having, I'm going to pick the two teams that placed highest in spring, Origin and Fnatic. Having a look at how the teams would rack up if we gave them summer championship points based on their current position in the LEC, you can see that with a third place position in spring and a first place position in summer, Mad Lions would actually be seeded first into our playoffs. GT Esports getting first in spring and 
I think about fifth or so in summer, would get 160 points and they'd be second. And even though Rogue did really poorly in spring, they get a lot of points for coming second in summer because we add extra weight to summer performance. Fnatic would then round out our top four overall, and this would be the seeding we have going into playoffs. So you might wonder why this matters so much, why I'm talking so much about it. It's going to be a G2 versus Fnatic final anyway. Well, as much as that is possible, seeding for playoffs is actually of paramount importance when it comes to qualifying for Worlds. Our top four teams from playoffs make the cut. So whoever manages to get first seed, in this example, it's Mad Lions, can only get as bad as fourth place in the entire thing. So they would automatically go to Worlds. In fact, Mad Lions wouldn't even need to play a series in playoffs to be qualified for the World Championship. The new system not only rewards a strong performance in the regular season, but also in playoffs, because although you can earn a spot in Worlds through championship points, your world seed is decided by where you end up in playoffs. Exceptional breakdown. Thank you for that one, Medic. And I absolutely love the new format. Um, one of the things that I'm really a big fan of, the weighted championship points uh, giving you seeding for some, and the removal of the regional qualifier. Everyone is going to remember many, many times when the third seed from a region like NA mm -hmm. or EU was in fact stronger than the representative that went on championship points. It shows current form, current patch strength, and obviously this is taken into account in the new system. So hopefully, one, two, three, four should be more appropriate. Yeah, we'll see. It'll be very exciting to see. And more big news, of course. Jack Troll is returning to the LEC, this time for Origin. What do we think? I mean, this is a hot topic yes. right now, if you ask anyone in the community, because on paper, people remember Jack Troll Vi from Vitality, and it wasn't super impressive. Yes, he went to Worlds, but there were some mistakes here and there. We thought of him as a more inconsistent player. But I had the chance of speaking at length with Deficio about this change, and what he told me was that he is looking for Jack Troll to bring a few things to the table, primarily 2 v two lane dominance. In spring for Origin, Upset was playing very well down to the bot side. In summer, it's cooled down in the early stages, so he wants Jack Troll to be a big factor there. On top of that synergy, he also wants to see Jack Troll working with Xersei better to make proactive plays throughout the game. But the most interesting thing I thought uh, from hearing the conversation was that he says he remembered Jack Troll as being this guy who looks like he was maybe a loose can, you know, yeah. making plays all over. Instead, he is actually very calculated, making a lot of calls in comms, and is going to try to clear things up for this Origin Yeah, that's team. a PR talk. What do you think? The, honestly, on paper, this is like, I don't know. I'm, it's I'm, a gamble. I'm, it's a huge gamble. But here's the thing. Jack Troll may have made big improvements since the last time we saw him on the stage, and that's what I'm looking for. Right. But he has to prove it. That's yeah. the biggest thing for me. We've heard the PR talk, and there's a lot of PR talk, especially from the song. I need to see what Jack Troll can do on the stage. And also, there's a lot of fans that are coming for him. So let's see. Put up or shut up. Yeah, definitely. You know, the proof will be in the pudding. And we also see, you know, it is the halfway part of the split. The playoffs are so important. Teams are making changes for Vitality. Skeens is in as well, so we'll see what happens there. And Umayyan is back in the bot the lane for G2. expectations for those two differences is gigantic. <laughs> Skeens is coming into a troubled roster, replacing somebody with a, a comparable skill, shall we say. <laughs> uh, Umayyan has to come in and step up. Uh, G2 really need to prove that they are the defending champions, and we need to see how he plays today. Absolutely. Well, while the action continues here in the LEC, over in Korea, our former colleague Yamato is making some huge waves. Here's what he told Quickshot earlier. Hello, everybody. I am joined by a former colleague and the most successful undefeated coach from Europe to ever go to Korea. It is the 400% Yamato Cannon. Dude, I am so proud <laughs> and so happy to see the success. What is it like for you over there in Korea? Honestly, I don't know where to start, man. It's it's amazing. Like the guys are making me feel so welcome. It's uh, it was so easy to be a part of the crew almost instantly, and uh, I just I love it here. The food is insane. I'm gaining <laughs> a bit of weight because oh, I'm eating it. too good. It's so worth it. It's, it's dangerous. It's so worth it. I agree. I was like thinking, should I stress myself with? With, you know, keeping the figure, I'm going to do that in the off-season. I'm just going <laughs> to enjoy myself with the food that's over here. And, uh, you know, in general, uh, life's good. I can't complain. Yamato, you can't complain because you stepped into this roster, landed in the LCK, took a team that was on a five-game, five-series losing streak, and now you've won four series in a row. When we take that into consideration with the rest of the standings and some of the surprise results that's come in, like, what's your perspective on the league? Because... You guys are looking fantastic. 
No, we definitely faced like weaker opponents, you know, in the in the second half of the first round. So that's a part of it too. We, we managed to, you know, get all the tough ones, DRX and the dumb ones in the beginning. And this is going to be, you know, the teams uh, to beat. Uh, T1 is kind of all over the place. Afrika is all over the place. Uh, Genji is kind of uh, hit and miss sometimes, but they're also very strong. I think DRX and Dam1 are uh, redefining the league a little bit and are playing in a very explosive way. So kind of the, the LCK kind of uh, idea of how to play the game is kind of uh, dying slowly and there's kind of a rebirth happening. Over here. Oh, dying slowly. Listen, Mr. Yamato Cannon, you better make this quick because I distinctly remember the emotional, emotive speeches at Worlds uh, when you were representing Vitality. Play your game, play your style. Mm. What has it been like adapting to the LCK system? Um, going deeper, I imagine, into the scrim culture than ever before. And frankly speaking, bringing a very unique perspective uh, to the team and, and frankly to the league. I think, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's very different. Like I've had the pleasure of working with uh, Korean players in the past and I could kind of piece together how the co culture functions. There are a lot of things that are way easier. Some things are way harder. Like uh, in, in Europe, uh, I like to push the players to really open up and, you know, express themselves so everything is kind of taken care of, you know, both their emotional sides and all their needs. And there's something that is kind of hard to get out of Korean players. But at yeah. the same time, they are very disciplined, naturally disciplined. If I tell them practice this, focus on this, it's very easy for them to just, you know, just do it. Yeah. And uh, this is kind of, you know, the pros and cons. But in general, uh, the fact that it was so easy for me to hop into the team and everyone was just so open-minded about it uh, is what uh, just made it uh, a success story and i, I think it's not necessarily about you know some some culture thing i, I think it. it's just about you know people you know just people i don't envy you uh because it's a difficult situation to be in with such success <laughs> already um okay so what is happening tomorrow in the lck what can we watch um i think you guys are playing but uh are, are we going to be seeing 500 percent uh yamato yeah, baby, we're going to go for the 500% win ratio. We've got all the tomatoes in the back. I love <laughs> we're it. We're going to go for it. We face KT and uh, it's going to be a fun match because the last time we faced them, we had <sighs> we faced Smeb in the support role and now Tucson is back. Uh, he's uh, healthy now, so I'm happy for that. So we're going to have uh, a, a real a best of three now. I am so sad that you left us, but so proud of the success you're finding. <laughs> we only have a little bit of time left Thank you. and it wouldn't be right to not get your prediction for our match of the week. It is G2 versus Mad Lions. It is a rivalry that seems to be budding. Uh, let me know your prediction. Honestly, 10-14 is just, as you said before we started this interview, Trevor, it's the G2 patch. Sejuani is buffed, baby. Jungle's gonna pop off. He's gonna do well. <laughs> Umayana is back. Everything is aligning for G2, and I think they're gonna take it home. And later tonight, it's time for the matchup. I'm gonna do the toss. What time is it? 2020? What time is it? Devin? It's what, the last game on Saturday, my man. Last game on Saturday. Thank you very much. I missed the date. I couldn't open Discord. <laughs> there you go. That's my toss. <laughs>
really good, like right from the start. Definitely a flex option. Here's, whoa, Kai's going in. Gage going forward, the knockup. That was so easy. If you remove this player, could the team be the same? Bring me a real challenge. Mad Lions couldn't. They need Kaiser to be able to do what they do. Losing against us in the best of five is like probably hurt their pride a bit. I don't think they ever lost the best of five against the European team before. Of course, like we are first base as well. Like they probably want to beat us again. They're one of the two teams that beat us uh, in this season. So I think they want to repeat that for sure. But I also think that Matt is a good team. I do think though that they are a coach team and when something unexpected happens in game, they are not as good as adapting as they could be. So it is fairly easy to play against Matt as long as they have a good game plan and good draft heading into the game. Another team that is changing the way that drafting is done or sticking to their usual drafting style is G2. Their entire drafting style is based around having caps out of the lane. I'm gone. He spends 51.6% of the first 15 minutes of the game in mid lane. Caps is still stepping forward. Nemesis, he doesn't have the damage at this point. G2, they're playing on the edge. They're playing like Madman, but they make it work. Flipboard appears trying to bait him in, but here comes Caps in the meantime. Just going to ghost his way in. Is this a replay? It's not a replay. One more time. First, uh, it works. Why not try it again? All or nothing. You are already doomed. That's where it just becomes so interesting, because we basically have G2 that are playing with effectively two junglers. Kami can now step forward and get aggressive here, but Caps is so much. Pull back from Mickey, spit out. Vados is on the way now. They have to be careful. All goes down to the Mickey. Caps damage has to be respected, though. That's disgusting. And then you have Mad Lions that is throwing everything out the window. They are the anti-meta team. The humanoid lives, and the Orianna can take over this fight. Fnatic are falling as Mad will take the Elder. Are we as prepared as them or are we not? And if we are, I think we have a really great chance of uh, winning against them. I think we are like pretty evenly matched in like every role, so I think it would be like a pretty fun match. Every single game that passes, I believe more and more and more in the Mad Lions. Once playoffs comes around, you will see why I have been at the top for so long and everyone else hasn't. This is the current number one team in summer, Mad Lions, taking on the defending champions. I am more excited about G2 taking on MAD than I was against G2 taking on Fnatic. Whoa! The rivalry that is developing after MAD Lions took down G2 in the spring split in the playoffs, after seeing them competing back and forth, and frankly, after seeing how good MAD Lions got after G2 beat them in week one, I want Mad Lives to win. Oh, I echo your excitement about the match as a whole. It really is a budding rivalry, right? And we were talking so much about the changing of the guard, those new rookies, those new teams. Do they have the staying power to be at the top? This is going to be such a big indicator to that. And I feel like Mad Lions just continue to try and prove that they do deserve to be yep. considered up there. You know, they knocked down G2 in the playoffs in spring before making G2 really angry at them. And then G2 came back super fiery. But this match is always back and forth. It's always going to be super close. And I wonder if Mad Lions poke the bear here against G2, who have been off to a slower start than usual. Yeah. Do G2 just get even angrier and come back to hit and, him in the and face? And is it Perks that's playing or Uma Yan? Is it going to be Claps <laughs> or Craps? Um, yeah. What G2 is going to show up? Oh, I'm so hyped. Yeah, even, uh, you know, today we're also going to see G2. Perks is back. And, of course, Perks is going to want to beat Karzi and Kaiser, who's been heralded as, you know, the best support this split. There's so much going into this match. Going to be absolutely amazing. Also, this weekend, they have some things to play with because we're on patch temp. Point fourteen. Now, I did pick up in that interview with Yamato that this is the G2 patch. Right. Trevor, what are you talking about? It, it is the G2 patch. Did, I mean, I, so I was looking at the patch notes and I saw a few key indicators that signal to me that the balanced team in North America want G2 to win this game. Um, it's simple. The, the signs are there. Sejuani buffed. Karthus buffed. Zed buffed. Endo, okay. does G2 sure. play those champions? I mean, they've played those champions in the past, Grabs. yes. Can we call Grabs and ask Grabs what champion he'd like to put Yankos on? I mean, it's probably Sejuani, that's it's the gonna meme, yeah. Sejuani, and, and that, that's going to be the reaction, right? The other thing that I noticed that made it super crystal clear, no doubt in my mind, Wukong got nerfed. The team that handles and plays and uses Wukong the best is Mad Lions. It's one of his signature picks. Sure. When Pinoy tried to use it with Mickey last week, it was embarrassingly awful. I and mean, he's not lost, playing today. They lost that game. I'm aware of that fact. I'm saying the patch. The, the nerf hurts Mad Lions more, and it, it benefits G2. G2 is the favorite in the game, according to the balance team.
So I feel like you said a lot of things right there, and there was like one thing that I thought was like actually correct, and that's gonna be the Karthus. Uh, Karthus got buffed, and that's not really just for Yankos, that's for everyone. I think Karthus is absolutely nuts on this patch. Yeah, he saw a small jungle-focused nerf, but he got a whole slew of buffs alongside it. HP, movement speed, damage on his Q, his E tick rate, these things got changed. So Karthus, you look at him, flex pick, mid lane, jungle, bot lane potentially. Let's yeah. look out for him. We'll see. Uh, does this patch mean that there's going to be a lot of changes in the meta and how we've seen the games play out until now? So I don't think we're seeing huge meta changes. We saw a lot of champion changes on this patch. If there's any one role that gets hit the most, it's going to be bot lane because mm -hmm. we saw big nerf to Vars, like E damage way down. Maybe he gets pushed out entirely. Uh, Ezreal got nerfed as well. So I think we're going to see Aphelio start to creep back up again. Maybe some Ash. Ezreal will probably still hang around. But again, it's just champion changes, not meta sweeping. I'm very hopeful to see what also happens in the jungle a little bit more seriously. I would like to see Karthus back. Oh, that wasn't I, serious. I, I, <laughs> I'd also like to see if anybody does actually start playing the likes of Sejuani and what that does to the other Also roles. the Kha'Zix. Kha'Zix got some sweet buffs. I mean, I also don't know what's going to be happening with Fiddlesticks. I was watching a lot of VODs uh, throughout the weekend after seeing what Razork did on that champion. <laughs> I wonder if it is something that we'll see more play. So I'm hopeful and I'm excited, but like Enda said, it, it champion changes, but not overall match changes. Yeah, but we've we've had a week without LEC. Now we've got a new patch. We've got these great matchups. Ah, oh, couldn't be better. So uh, we'll see the new patch in action today and tomorrow. We're going to kick off the second half of the LEC summer right now. As said, tomorrow is that match of the week. But if you think back to our discussion from a bit earlier in ready check this is the time where you really have to accelerate there are so many teams in the running for playoffs you want to be the one that gets in there yeah and i mean if you're looking at some of those really important matchups say the first one today vitality sk has big standings implications i also think a lot of fanatic fans are wondering with a break off how can they bounce back here and try to right the course of that ship because the first half of the split has not looked good at all oh, the first half of the show and how uh, lec update spoke about fanatic painted that That's picture not us. Really i don't know what you're talking clearly. about mm -hmm. um, i also want to see what can happen with Schalke. I've enjoyed their memes. They've definitely embraced the losing streak as uh, <laughs> It's like they've had one good thing and that's the meme. <laughs> as positively as one can, but please do not use, uh, 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 you know, Lee dropping the weights against Gara as a gif. If you've seen the tweet, it'll make sense, but yeah, we can carry on. It does make sense to me. Uh, reminder, if you don't make it into the playoffs in summer, your season is over. No more regional I mean. qualifiers. Two teams that are vying for those spots in playoffs are SK and Vitality. They're also the first ones returning to the in week five. This is a rematch from week three, and in that week three, there was a lot going on in the bottom lane. Comp on Vitality destroyed Crowny. Yeah, I mean, Comp had such a great start to the spill where he was absolutely popping off down there in the bottom lane. And when I look at how these two teams match up, it really is going to be a battle between these bot lanes and these AD carries in particular, because a lot of the time the drafts are going to be focused around the big team fights. That means a whole lot of pressure put onto these two AD carries. So if Comp is able to find some of that magic, get that lead up against Crown Shot today, outperform him in the team fights, then Vitality definitely stand a chance. And we've seen Crown Shot evolve since then. He's really come into his own as that star player on SK. And actually, I think Ender and I were talking about this just before the break week as well, how Crown Shot now has players around him that are also playing at a higher level than they did in spring. During the course of spring, Crown Shot was able to look good with a team that honestly did not. Mm. Now, I want to know how far that team is able to go and how far they're going to be able to push. I do think the bot lane is going to be pivotal for this matchup, but you have to also keep in mind that Skeens is in for Vitality and she's out. Yeah. So what is he going to do? What is he going to bring back to the stage? He has played some games, you know, with us before and it didn't leave the biggest impression, but some new blood, new voices, new energy, maybe that's what Vitality needs. And when I'm looking at that change in particular, NG out, Skeens in, I'm, I'm like, I wasn't super impressed by either of them, but I haven't seen Skeens recently, so at worst, it's going to be a side grade for Vitality. And I think a lot of Vitality fans are going to be hopeful that it gives them another carry yeah. threat on this team because it hasn't been super consistent performances from a lot of their players. And if they can diversify from comp popping off in a couple games or a Melita performance here and there and have Skeens come in as an early game powerhouse, that could give them a lot of leverage. Yeah, that's where we can default to trust. We talked to Shanky a bit earlier in the split, uh, who develops a lot of the talent on that roster, and they have a plan, and they work with all of these players, and they felt it was the right time to bring Skeens in. So we'll see what happens. SK versus Vitality is first, but over the next four weeks, we will decide the team's worthy to challenge for a spot at Worlds, and it all starts with SK and Vitality. Young, talented, hungry, fearless, and currently the best. Mad Lions and Grove are battling for sole control of first in the LEC. Mad Lions, unstoppable. Syndrome's looking for the seven. He's gonna get it out! Oh, are you kidding me? 
much. When punches can't get the damage in, he's putting spear after spear into limit. But each spear does a minuscule amount of damage. Already he's down. There's another as Kazi falls right on feared away. Wow, what a dominant performance from Misfits. That may be. Could one of these teams be our summer champion? They can't fight. Oh, what the? No, what? What? How did he? What? Are we watching history being made right here, right now? And Melissa are just ripping through the back line. It's not even about comp anymore. Well, many of the middle of the pack teams that we had from us, but are also elevating the doesn't have play. the damage at this point. G2, they're playing on the edge. They're playing like Batman, but they make it work. If we G2. had said to you before the start of summer that this is what the top three would look like and that Fnatic and G2 wouldn't be at the top of the tables, you would have called me crazy, Draco. Double kill for him as he jumps forward. Reckless going to fall next to Subset. That's the triple. Yeah, it's still early on. It's still really close. But the middle of the pack teams, the SKs, the Misfits, the Vitalities, the Mad Lions, the Rogues, all of them have risen. I saw him run to his death warrant. He's still alive. Inex is looking to get a second. He gets a double kill. It feels like it's been completely shifted. There is pretty much nothing that you can take from Spring that is reliably transferred over to Spring. The whole league is turned on its head. Who will rise and who will fall?